Hello everyone, and welcome to News and Views for May the 16th, 2024. Our biggest story this week is coming out of Carberry, where uh, Premier Canoe and uh, his entourage were down there to announce the reopening of the Carberry Emergency Room. That has been closed since last year. There's been a huge struggle getting physicians into the town of Carberry. Um, what is happening now, the emergency room is reopened, but it's not 24-7. They are on their regular schedule and they have three doctors coming through on rotation. Um, so these doctors are serving the emergency room. They are not available for appointments. However, that does mean that there are emergency services again in the town of Carberry, which is a huge thing to celebrate. So we have a clip of that press conference in our show today, as well as a statement from the um, Carberry and North Cypress Langford Health Action Committee, who are the ones who have sort of made this happen and are continuing their work to get more health care into the Carberry area. And as well, we were down in Carberry for the Children's Business Fair. Um, this is an event where uh, kids uh, produce their own product or service and market it in, in a fair environment. Um, and they're responsible for all of the marketing, all the design, everything. Uh, we have a similar event in Nepal last year. And there was one in Carberry just this past weekend. Uh, great success uh, from all reports. So we have a clip from that on our show as well. Then we were down at uh, the Parkside Gardens Nipua location, which is at the Co-op Home Store, for their Business After Five event. So we got to hear from them, talk to them, take a little tour of the this year's greenhouse, and check that out. And then finally, a small taste of the spring concert from the uh, community choir with guests, the Coraliers, the hymns, and the NACI, NACI Chorale packed that building to the rafters um, but it was a wonderful concert so we have a small amount here on the show full version elsewhere in our schedule similarly with the carberry emergency room story um, we will have the full press conference elsewhere in the nacdv schedule as well so if you have something going on something coming up or something you want to bring to our attention please do get in touch with us you can reach us by email nactv at wcgwave.ca or by phone, 204-476-2639. Thanks, and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone. I guess we'll get the proceedings started here. Um, I want to say good morning to everybody, and thank you for joining us. This is a huge show of support, and it's very much appreciated. Very good. Um, just introduce myself. My name is Ray Muirhead, and I am the mayor of the town of Carberry. I'm joined by my colleague on my left, Mike Sudak. He's town councillor, as well as Loretta Oliver on my right, retired nurse, member of the Health Action Committee, and a strong voice for Carberry's health care. We are here happy to host Premier Wab Canoe, Minister Ozuma Azaguara, Minister Glenn Simar, as well as other dignitaries and physician guests who are all surrounding me. I will start by inviting Premier Canoe to share some news with the residents of the town of Carberry. Right, very good. Thanks, Mr. Right. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I got a whole bunch of notes here, but I'm just going to cut to the chase. We're here to announce the reopening of the Carberry Emergency Department. We have seen firsthand now in the efforts to reopen your emergency department just how much effort and how much work comes from the grassroots. And it really is heartwarming and awe-inspiring to see those local efforts. So today we're making an announcement, but this is your announcement. This is the people of Carberry's announcement. You own this. And so we're here to say that yes, as a culmination of grassroots effort, strong local leadership, support from the provincial government, we're able to bring in a rotation of three physicians to Carberry who are going to ensure <laughs> who are going to ensure that uh, there's an emergency department uh, here for you uh, should you need it, and also uh, at the same time that they'll be able to visit uh, in uh, the personal care setting and deliver care for seniors here in Carberry. <laughs> and you'll be able to make appointments too. 
if you want to get into a primary care uh, visit with the physicians while they're here. So there's going to be a whole range of health care services here to meet your needs. And it's a combination of these local efforts, the provincial resources, but also I think some really good problem solving and innovative thinking from the, from the clinical side and the physicians who are stepping up to say, you know what, we can work together and put together a model that works to meet the needs of the people of Carberry. And as your Premier, uh, a, a job that I feel so humble and awe-induced uh, to be able to uh, serve in the capacity of, I just want to say this. The experience of bringing an emergency department back to Carberry has taught our team so many lessons. And this is going to help us serve communities across rural Manitoba. The lessons that we've learned in Carberry are going to help us across Prairie Mountain, are going to help us across Westman, Central Plains, all of Manitoba. So many communities are up against it when it comes to the challenge of keeping the health care services in your community so that your community can stay strong. And so I really hope that the people here in Carberry feel a sense of pride that your contribution, your efforts, your tireless advocacy is not only bringing health care services back in your home community, but it's going to help ensure that there's strong health care services for many other communities and so many more people across this great province. And so, yeah, I just really commend folks for not losing hope, for not giving up the, uh, the fight and continuing to demand that uh, thing that I think we all deserve, and that is a fundamental Canadian value, and that's good access to public health care. So thank you so much for joining us here today, and thank you so much to the people of Carberry, the Health Action Committee, your local leadership for leading the way. This is an announcement that we're very, very happy to share with you, and the fact that it's community-led just makes it uh, such a good news story. So miigwech, merci, and thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's not on my agenda today, but I want to take the time to introduce you to a couple of doctors that are helping us out. We're very much appreciative of us. Dr. Eliurani, Dr. Fashola. They've been helping us out with our ER and continue, and we're very much appreciated. So first name Clevis, last name Eliurani, K-L-E-V-I-S, I-L-I-R-I-A-N-I. So uh, I was pretty impressed how committed the community was to, to attracting a physician here. They seemed to have a very, you know, um, attractive plan. Uh, everybody was super committed, so I, I really appreciated that. So that's one of the reasons why, why I came here. And I want to give special thanks to Dr. Maharaj and, and Barry Bannock as well, who reached out to me. They told me about this community and I uh, was certainly impressed by the plan. So yeah, okay, thank you. Hello, I'm Dr. Zahid Fashola. Zahid is Z-A-H-E-E-D, and Fashola is F-A-S-H-O-L-A. Uh, why Carberry? Well, I like to be on the positive side of things. I like to help, and that's why I'm a physician. So when I was called on to serve, I feel the least I could do is to help. I want to see Carberry succeed the way Verdin is succeeding. So I wish everybody the best of luck. I would like to thank everybody for coming out. This is a great show of support. Thank you very much. And also I would like to uh, thank everybody up here for all their help. It took all of us to do this. So kudos to everybody. And. Especially, thank you to Premier and Minister for your announcement. Very much appreciated. We won't forget this. We'll keep your feet to the fire as well, too. So. <laughs> we won't forget that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you again to important guests, dignitaries, physicians, residents for attending. Have a good day and travel home safely. Thank you. We reached out to Carberry's Health Action Committee for clarification on what this actually means for the community. They have now released the following statement. Following the wonderful announcement by Premier Canu and Minister Asaguara on Friday, we wanted to clarify some information as it pertains to our health centre and emergency department. 
Firstly, this is just a first step of many in repairing health care in our area. Primary care is an ongoing task and we are working hard to bring new physicians here on a permanent basis. At this time, appointments are not available with these physicians. As more information is available, we will be sure to update everyone. Secondly, our emergency department is being covered on a rotational basis with the three doctors that were announced. This means that we are not open 24-7 at this time. We will work towards this in the future, but currently please refer to the emergency schedule that is posted on Prairie Mountain Health's website. Once again, we would like to thank Premier Canu and Minister Asaguara, their staff, and all that were able to attend on Friday, May 10th. There's hope on the horizon for healthcare in our area. Sincerely, Carberry North Cypress Langford Health Action Committee. So we're here today at the Carberry Children's Business Fair, and you are? My name is Tamara Flett. Um, I am part of the Arts Council, the Administrative Arts Director. Okay, and how did this come about? You know what, we actually got the idea from one of the parents that is here today. Um, yeah, and we kind of worked with it, and it turned out great. So how does it work? So what the kids do is they make um, a business plan, they make a business name, they design their product, and then they sell it. So it's all the kids, it's all their work. All kids, all their work, yeah. Wonderful. And did you have a lot of like uh, interest in it? We did, yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of interest, so yeah, it's, it's been going great so far. Wonderful. Is this something you plan to do sort of annually if you can? Yes, yeah. Oh, definitely. We've already had people asking about next year. Oh, so. wonderful. Yeah. And so, um, you know, anything else you want to plug for what's going on at Carberry over the next, you know, month or two? Oh, there's so much going on. We have the Fireman's Breakfast on June 15th, um, and we're actually doing a Father's Day craft that day. And, um, oh my gosh, on the spot, I can't, uh, <laughs> there's always something going there's on. There's always something, yes. I feel it. Oh, and then there's also a social, um, the Hit Town's coming June 8th, I think it is. It's always busy here. Lots of fun things. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> So we're meeting with Eric Wolgamuth mm -hmm. and we're here at uh, the new park location at Parkside Gardens. So when did you open for the season, Eric? Uh, we opened here in Nipwa, um on Wednesday the 6th and we were open um, May 1st in Red Mountain. Mm -hmm. And what hours? Are you going to be running? Our hours are 9 till 6 in Nipua and our hours for the Riding Mountain location is 9 o'clock till 8 o'clock. And this is Monday through to Saturday? Monday through Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Is um, there anything new planned for this year in the way of varieties of plants? Uh, there's There are some new plants as usual, but um, Nothing, nothing spectacular, I guess, or right. What are the most popular plants that people are looking for? Oh. Say, for instance, they have an apartment with a balcony, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a garden. What, what would you recommend there? Oh, it seems like, it seems like the focus has been on. Um, you know, somewhat maintenance-free or less low-maintenance plants. Um, on a balcony situation, we often would suggest, um, well, depending on where you're, which, what you're facing, if you're facing to, towards the sun, it's often quite hot, so it need to be a heat-loving plant. Um, petunias are always a, a terrific sun 
option and then we have Salinas which is actually uh, a multi-purpose they're good for the shade ants on both so we we like often in our custom planters that we fill we put a Salinia in them mm -hmm. now um, would it be true to say that hanged in plants are very popular yes. again yeah 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 terrific they're a perfect easy solution for, for decorating up a balcony or a patio area mm -hmm. And then you have the, the larger ones, which um, the standing are pots, standing pots yeah. and, that. and you're, you're also involved with vegetables, is that right? Yeah, we have lots of vegetables and um, herbs, mm -hmm. things like that. Tomatoes are very popular. Tomatoes, always tomatoes, yeah. 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 How about cucumbers? Yes, we have cucumbers. Mm -hmm. um, hanging baskets. Hanging basket cucumbers have, have been a amazing seller mm -hmm. through the years, and they are again this year, it seems. Yeah. Now, um, a few years ago, I noticed that there seemed to be um, a popular thing, I don't see them so much now, where potatoes are grown in a bag, in a hang, hanging uh, uh, bag there. Is that Was that just a, a one-off? We, we've done some potatoes in uh, pots, mm -hmm. but we have never done one in a hanging basket, yeah. in a hanging bag or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a new thing. It's been interesting to experiment with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, where do you obtain um, your seeds, for instance? Oh, we have numerous suppliers. Some of our wholesale suppliers, uh, ball seed is a very, very uh, one of our biggest suppliers of seed. Mm -hmm. um, some of our garden seed would come from Stokes. Some from TNT actually closer by. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How many staff do you run uh, during a season? I guess it varies. Yeah, it varies. We have, I think we have nine staff full-time part-time staff in our two locations some of them are family members uh, yeah my wife the co-owner and then uh, and then most of them are uh, just employees mm -hmm. yeah. yeah okay and they all have obviously an interesting in uh, plants yeah vegetables oh, yeah. And that. yeah yeah do you find um, you need to give them an update, any training on that from year to year, or? They, they get training um, more by just working together with us and communi as we communicate and speak yeah. about the plants, you know, break time we often talk about the plants and discuss, discuss them and how they grow and stuff like that. We don't have a formal training program. No. no. Is this the second year that you've been at this location? This is our second year, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. It's worked very well. Yeah, we, we like it here. It's mm -hmm. terrific. Together with the Co-op Garden Center, it's been great. Yeah, because the former location was near to the grocery store, is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I've seen your, your truck from time to time traveling between the two locations. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we make deliveries frequently throughout the week. Mm -hmm. So, um, are you able to offer um, plants, etc., to businesses or are in the town at all? Do you get inquiries from that? We do some. Yeah. We do some uh, custom planters for businesses in in mm -hmm. the area. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly um, there's a great variety of uh, uh, plants here in many different colors. In that. Um, what sort of herbs do you grow here? Herbs? Herb, yeah. Oh, that's a long list. <laughs> <laughs> basil and, and basil has always been a, a very popular herb for us. We always make sure we have basil and, and uh, dill, fennel, uh, oregano, um, 
there's lots of mints, different mints, mints, mm -hmm. the cat mint, the peppermint, spearmint. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sure I've missed a, a whole pile of them. Yeah. And then I think you have uh, often uh, ca cactus. Yeah, we have cactuses, yeah. uh, succulents, lots of different varieties. Is there a special um, procedure in looking after uh, cactus or, and the associated uh, uh, plants to, of that variety? Not a, I don't know if I terribly do they, do they special uh, care, but but they're they're pretty carefree. Like you don't yeah. have there's not a lot of care needed. A little bit of moisture now and then, and and definitely not overwatering. That's the that's probably the biggest battle. Uh huh. Making okay. sure they don't get too much water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd like to add for the the viewers and, and the season? Um. Yeah. Well, we're enthused enthused about the season, and they're looking forward to seeing you all down here. Mm -hmm. So, um, when does your season finishes? Uh, we typically close the end of June. End of June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the Nepal location being open some throughout the summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With uh, less hours or whatever. Now, as a family, do you have your own garden as well? Yes, we always plant a garden. Yeah. Yeah. That's a necessity. <laughs> <laughs> you save a lot of money that way, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, and save a lot of money and it's it's good... Uh, fresh vegetables. Yeah, you know? good food and and good exercise and good mm -hmm. entertainment. Weather-wise, do you think it's going to be good this year? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping for a good year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it looks hopeful. Yeah. I, I think it'll be fantastic. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, one final thing, uh, is there a lot of maintenance in uh, not only this location but the one in Rydy Mountain in the material that you use to build the greenhouse, the, um, the, the plastic or cladding? That there is, we, we usually replace uh, a covering on one or two houses a year is, yeah. is quite typical. We don't always, but but yeah, there is always the plastic and gets old over time. Mm -hmm. And does uh, the structure last throughout the winter, or do you have to dismantle it? No, no, we our structures all stay up. Mm -hmm. Summer, winter, it, uh, yeah. yeah. No problem with the snow or anything like that. No, nope, haven't had any problems. Good. Yeah. Excellent.
Here we go.